Hey everyone, I just want to say a really big thanks to everyone who liked, shared and particularly who subscribed to my channel over the last few days. This has been an interesting time uh, in the culture that we're in at the moment with cancel culture and we really have to do away with this nonsense. Um, so I really, really appreciate any subscriptions. I really appreciate anyone that follows me on Instagram. I'm at ninjanight 44 and on Twitter I'm at the underscore ninja night. So I was notified about this on Twitter and it's an article from Off the Ball Sports. Now I'm very curious as to why they've conducted this interview, given it has nothing really to do with sports in the slightest. Um this is a site that likes to shill. It's very strange. And as we can see here from the topics of, uh, on the top there, it's all about sports, so I'm not really sure why they've decided to conduct this interview. Um perhaps they're looking to feed off the name too. So Erica Cody, verse Tiles apology was a BS PR stunt. So it's written by this guy here. This guy, um, if you take a look at his Twitter, um, posting very, very strange stuff in terms of the BLM movement and things like that, um, you know, would be an individual to look into. So Irish musician, and that's probably should be using that, using that term loosely, Eric Cody condemned the behaviour of Dublin rap duo Versatile during her appearance on Wednesday's Off the Ball AM. There was nothing new to the controversy that surrounded Casey Walsh and Alex Sheehan of Versailles in recent weeks. Okay, I don't know why you're bringing Alex's name into it. He's got nothing to do with this, from what I can see. Rather, as musician, Erica Cody explained while a guest on the OTB Culture Hall of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> My God. It's in association with Now TV, recent events elsewhere <coughs> have finally led people to confront an uncomfortable reality. I was calling him out on that stuff last year. Nothing was done about it. So basically, you didn't get the airtime you wanted last year. So here you are again. She recalled. There were no apologies or pulling stuff down off a website. Uh, I still maintain that they shouldn't have done it. Um, in terms of apologising or pulling stuff down. Mm, you know, it's good. It's good for them. I think I suppose if they stood up to this cancel culture nonsense. But it takes something for like this. The widespread reaction to the murder of George Floyd at the hands of a white US police officer to happen for the, for people to then go oh this is actually very bad what are you talking about there's nothing to suggest that what happened to george floyd was a racially motivated incident nothing in the slightest was it bad absolutely and i condemn what the cops did because what they did was wrong and it was a tragic and unfortunate loss of life i think all of the cops involved were were definitely wrong to do what they did but there's nothing to highlight the fact that that was a racially motivated crime it's interesting, Erica, that you're upset about the police here in this one because, in fact, uh, were you upset about Tony Timpa, who died in a similar manner? I would doubt it. Were you upset about David Dorn, a former police chief, who actually went to the scene of a friend's shop who was being looted and there were things being awful things being done to it by members of BLM? That man was killed. He was killed and he was his death was live-streamed on Facebook absolutely horrendous but i don't think you're upset about that i was outraged by that man's death a good civilian a good man dead but nobody cared in fact they wanted to talk about a guy with a very checkered history in terms of felonies and criminal behavior so this has been bad for a very long time but people were just being complicit i would highly doubt that if that was the fact of the matter how did barack obama get into office you know, the population of America is 12% African-American, 6% of those are male, and 6% of those are female. If America was racist, how did Barack Obama get into office? Do you understand? There's no room for complicity now. You can either be anti-racist or not, and it's plain and simple. Okay, well, I would say that most people, the majority of people with a functioning brain are anti-racist, but you don't have to shout it from the rooftops. You really don't. In a wide-ranging discussion on Erica Cody's own experience of being the target of it when while growing up in Ireland, Roy, um, if you're talking about your sports background, everyone gets abuse on the pitch. That's just, when you cross the line, that's just it, and you have to take it. You know, I've been across plenty of lines on pitches, and you just take the abuse, and that's it. <laughs> that's why the sports side of things are predominantly run at the moment, uh, and that the male version of it is so good at the minute because there's less people complaining you know you have guys there over in the u.s soccer team thinking that they're they're big shots the arts in, in the grand scheme of things uh the lioness or lioness whatever way 
Leoness, I suppose, singer songwriter rejected. Never heard of that song now either. Rejected the attempt of Vertoil, Vertoil to justify their actions alongside the overtism of their 2017 Dublin City Jays, which contains explicit language lyrics about black women and stereotypes about black men. Cody addressed an image that surfaced of the band members in blackface. I mean, you know, the, in Dublin City Jays, it's a song that they're kind of really self-depreciating in it. To be fair, if you look into the lyrics, I doubt that you have. Um, but maybe educate yourself on those ly- lyrics and I don't think you'll find too much of a problem. A lot of people in this country know what blackface is and youth is not an excuse. Well, it was a Halloween party, so I mean, it's nothing, you know, youth does factor into that and that people dress up and all that. But she responded to the subsequent suggestion of band member Walsh that he had been oblivious to the history of blackface. You're 17 and you're dressing up as easy E. Well, Jimmy Fallon, uh, not Jimmy Fallon, sorry, Jimmy Kimmel, dressed up and had an album as well too and he actually used the N word on the album as well too but I don't think you're upset about him you probably watch his shows uh, if you watch Sarah Silverman I'm sure you won't have an issue with her or the litany of other SJW woke political weirdos that's in Hollywood now at the minute they're shouting from the rooftops about these things and actually you're the ones that are involved in it so oh we're sorry we were really young, young. that's BS well yeah he's 17 you know what I mean and not only that, I don't like the connotation that you're using here as well too with the easy e stuff. So I'll actually shout the lads here. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my brothers, Halloween tradition continues into year six. Who's next? Okay, so we have Dog the Bounty Hunter, we have Mario and Luigi. Wow, they're appropriating uh, Dog the Bounty Hunter. Orange Man Bad. What about Mario and Luigi? Oh, we're appropriating Italian custom. Breaking Bad. Oh no, someone was appropriating fella that was being bald there. No, that's not right. Easy and Ice Cube. Now, it's very clear to see that this guy here, if Eric, if he knew anything about the history of uh, Easy e or Ice Cube, you'd know that this guy is actually Easy e and he's Ice Cube. And I'm just going to show an image here that I'll just show that. So we have Easy e over here and he has the owl hair and the cap on. We have Ice Cube over here and he has the beanie on. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Samples. So I'm going to go on past that one now. Now, the reason why I'm saying to you that I'm not really a fan of the fact that you're talking about uh, Easy E, that you're, you're saying he's Easy E, if you do know your history about Easy E, you know well how Easy E passed. And that is a connotation in itself. In its totality, Eric Cody remember, remains sceptical of the band's sincerity in deciding to address these issues at a point where it could would finally appear to be negatively impacting their careers. It was the biggest load of, oh, I could say a coarse word right now, but I won't. And reading that you just knew they didn't care. They shouldn't, though. I mean, they shouldn't be listening to people like you at all. She said of the address they made via an Instagram post, this is just for their own gain. I think what you're doing is for your own gain, let's be honest. For them to say that this is just a part of the characters they play, absolutely is part of the characters they play. The whole thing was just a waste of time. It was a PR stunt. When I was reading it, I knew it was, it was only there because they didn't want to be kicked off the Snoop Dogg show. When in reality, this whole thing is an absolute joke because they were putting the bill in for the lyrics that they had in the first place. So we're going to look at Snoop Dogg here. Look at the legal incidents that this guy has. I'm going to do another video on Snoop Dogg and what you were talking about here. But look at the litany of incidents that he has. And as far as I know... Snoop Dogg started out life as a PIMP, has a song as well too, uh, glorifying it, which is pretty misogynistic, isn't it, Erica? But you don't think you have an issue with Snoop Dogg. Did you have an issue with Snoop Dogg as well too when he recorded himself after Floyd Mayweather won against Conor McGregor and he used a litany of uh, insults, uh, homophobic insults and actually racially motivated insults? Uh, I didn't see the outrage from you then. Or could we have outrage from you then now about it? Maybe cancel Snoop Dogg. Is this is this what you're gonna go with next? At least be consistent. Beyond the recent controversy, Erica Cody had cause to lament the fact that the duo in question had managed to secure such a following. They sold out the three arena light last year. Well done, lads. Despite the troubling l- lyrics in their songs. Yeah, right. When you Google Irish hip hop, they're the first act that comes up. That's a light. That's a light. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different individuals so far before you get to the lads. Ten, eleven, twelve. There are twelve down in the Google images. So that's a fabrication there. Wrap it, Cardo. Uh, the first act to come out, uh, but she said that's not why we stand. 
But what we stand for here at all. Right. There's some really good hip hop here. And that includes white Irish rappers. Well at least you give them a bit of a plug. But you didn't name them. Funnily enough. That would be a much better way to spend your time. Than listening to those racist. Uh, uh, phobe. And misogynistic lyrics. Now. You're talking about misogyny Erica. And this is where I'm going to bring this point to. This is this image here, for example. Girls aren't listening to your music because of this image. This image is purely there to attract men. Purely. And if you want to say otherwise, fire ahead. But this image here and the other images where you have low-cut tops and stuff, that ain't for the girls. The girls are not interested in that. Maybe some are, but, you know, the majority of them probably not. So... <laughs> going at that angle you're looking for the misogyny there you're looking for people to notice you there otherwise cover up that could be something you could think of maybe in the future but i don't know if you'd do so well if you covered up um at all now this is extremely troubling the what's going to come next there and, uh, and I, i'm absolutely baffled that this wasn't pushed back on by the the interviewer really should have been should have been challenged on this when you were a guest in the culture as versatile are in hip hop, you need to understand where the genre you're working within comes from. My God, that is a massive statement that you just made. A guest in the culture, that's incredible. That's like Metallica coming out and saying, listen, we know that Eric D. July, he's a fella that uh, is black. I don't think he should be involved in metal. You're a guest in the culture. This is outrageous. That's an outrageous statement. Absolutely. You need to understand where the genre you're working from, working within comes from. It wasn't made for this. Yes, it was. Snoop Dogg has profite- profiteered on this. I'm going to show you some of the other hip hop artists that have profiteered on these these type of lyrics now in a moment. And I don't want them to be cancelled. I just want to want to show some uh, levity here, so you could fetishize and dehumanize a black woman in an art form created by black folk. You're being an ist now. It begins with R and it ends with Ist. You're being an Ist now by saying this. Imagine any top bands or any you know ordinary uh, individual saying this about a, a black person. You're a guest in in our in our community. What? That's nonsense. So when you're a guest, and she says it again. <laughs> so when you're a guest in the culture that comes with a certain amount of respect. No, it doesn't. I'm going to show you now in a moment why it doesn't. That you have to give back to that culture. How? So you're, you, what you want is you want people to bow down and kiss your feet or something like that. Is that what you want? Uh, expand on that point. If anything, first I'll have been disrespecting that culture for a very long time. <laughs> it's laughable stuff and the interviewers would have pushed back, back on it, you know, to be honest. But we're going to look here now. So apparently the lads are a guest in the culture and we're going to see a similar trend across this now. Hip hop artists when you go with them, Kanye West. You're gonna see some. You're gonna see something now that's gonna be linking everyone here, bar a couple of people. Drake. Jay Z. Wasn't didn't he have a song about gold digger? Didn't he? Hmm. Drake. I think he's made a couple of songs as well too, based on Jay Z. Definitely. Eminem. Stop the lights. Don't tell me Eminem uh, is homophobic and misogynistic, is he? No way. He couldn't be. All of those years talking about his ex-wife? No way. Kendrick Lamar. Lil Wayne. (laughs) Nicki Minaj. Nas. Tupac. The great Tupac. Snoop Dogg. P-I-M-P. The notorious B.I.G. I think he had a couple of uh, songs that might have might have, might have angered you, Eric, and maybe Chance the Rapper, the Wu Tang Clan. Everybody knows about these guys. Travis Scott, Post Malone. So we've got Eminem and Post Malone, just to to show you now for the moment. J. Cole, Cardi B, Dr. Dre, Ice Cube, Fifty Cent. I think didn't didn't Fifty Cent have a checkered past in, uh, being a criminal? Didn't he? Hmm. Extension. Migos. Beyonce. Public Enemy. The Beastie Boys. That's three. If you know what I'm saying. I'm counting. No, I'm in. I can count all the other individuals because there's so many. We got Meek Mill. Sean Combs. He was involved with the Notorious. Run DMC. They haven't said Anton in years, have they? 
21 Savage, Young Tug. Hmm, that seems to be a bit of a an AMR, right? Lil Uzi Vert, Future, Most Def, T.I., Chris Brown, Stop the Lights, Chris Brown can't be misogynistic. No way. I don't believe it. It's sarcasm, obviously. Outcast, Gucci Mane, Lauren Hill, Juice World, Ice T, the Don Mecca, Kodak, Kodak Black, Ghostface Killer, Nipsey Hussle, ASAP Rocky, KRS One, Rick Ross, A Tribe Called Quest, LL Cool J, Tyler the Creator, Little Baby, Jeezy. You know, you were telling the lads there a guess in the culture. We've talked about Eminem in the past there. Eminem and the hardships that he faced grown into this industry. He's talked about it multiple times with Dr. Dre. He was bouncing label from label to label. They didn't want him. They seen his colour of his skin. Good luck with that, won't you? Same with uh, Machine Gun Kelly, who was actually... They tried to block him out of the industry as well, too. Now, also, you have Vanilla Ice. Vanilla Ice would be fairly infamous in that he's vilified within that community. So, to say that the lads are guessing the culture goes to show the type of mentality that's been shown to the likes of Eminem in the past. The type of mentality that's been shown to Machine Gun Kelly in the past. That is an absolutely ridiculous statement from you and I think that you really need to think back on that one. I mean, that is just pure ism and ist. You know what I'm saying? I can't believe that the interviewer let you away with that one. Because that had been the question I'd have pressed straight away. Would have been, how come you're saying that? I guess in the culture, my God, I, uh, I, I don't know what else to say. Look, I'm going to do another video because there's another st another story that I was linked towards um, in the last couple of days. So I'm going to cover that one as well too. Because the hypocrisy and the cancel culture that this individual is using is wrong. And she has no idea what she's talking about in the slightest. And she's trying to harm the career of two lads there that are starting, they're on the up. That could be extremely psychologically affected by this whole thing. They could they've played characters in their in, in their videos, they've played characters with what they've written, and you're trying to knock them. And they're probably doubting themselves now and what they'll do going forward, and they shouldn't be. They need to rise from this now and come back even harder than before. Lads, I'll give you a, a title of a song for free if you're looking, if you're watching. I hope you are, and I hope you're liking what I'm doing. Title of a song for your next album. Cancel culture. I don't want any royalties, don't want nothing from you. Title of the of next song, Cancel Culture. Do it, lads. I'd buy it up, no problem. Alright? <laughs> so listen, I'm going to leave it there. Um, let's keep fighting against this nonsense. Subscribe to my channel. Like, share, and I really appreciate all of the good and positive feedback that's come back for this one. Thank you very much.